Amen. Praise the Lord. Isn't God good? How many had a wonderful Memorial Day? How many took time to remember those who have given their life for this, our freedom? Amen. And I, last week I was praying for some and, you know, just encouraging them. Some of you know my, my family. My dad was in the Marine Corps. My mom was in the Navy. And, you know, they came back here and they lived. Li my dad's still alive. My mom lived out her life. But so many have given their life for, free, for freedom. And, you know, I thank all of you who are here today to celebrate life with us. And today I, I want to preach a message that the Lord has put on my heart. And it's entitled, I'm Pentecostal and it's not my fault. I'm Pentecostal, and it's not my fault. Amen? And I, and I was thinking about this message today, and I was, I was thinking about um, thoroughly explaining Pentecost this morning. And as I was writing the message and uh, letting the Lord speak to me, I realized that we're not even going to get close to what I believe the Lord wants to show us. For the next few weeks, I'm going to be speaking more on Pentecost and the, and the Holy Spirit and what Pentecost is and what it means to us. But, but today, again, I'm Pentecostal, and it's not my fault. There's a story told of a husband and wife, both who were doctors. One, a doctor of theology, and the other, a doctor of medicine. When their doorbell was rung, the housekeeper answered, and the person asked for the doctor. The housekeeper said, do you want the one who preaches, or do you want the one who practices? And I thought about that, and I was thinking about Christians today. We have a lot of people who say things, but they don't practice what they say. Right? I mean, we have a lot of people who can talk the talk, but don't walk the walk. And, and so I began to pray and say, Lord, I, I need a fresh word on Pentecost, because Across the globe today, people are talking about Pentecost, and somehow we associate Pentecost, especially in the assemblies of God, with speaking in tongues. And then we end up going through life seeking the gift of tongues, and we get disappointed when the evangelist comes and says, whoever wants to speak in tongues, come forward, right? And then this person speaks in an unknown tongue or known tongue, and this one doesn't. And you walk away feeling discouraged. Now, I've been in AG for many years. I've seen so many people. I've counseled people. You know, and of course, we want to say, well, is there sin in, her, in your heart, brother or sister? Are you, are you diligently seeking the power of the Holy Spirit? And, you know, and then I like to say this. What are you going to do with it if you have it? I mean, what are you going to do with the Holy Spirit? And that brings us to what Pentecost and how Pentecost plays out even for us today, our text, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4, says this, When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And some of you today might not, you may, this may be a new message to you about Pentecost. You never really thought about it. We think about, you know, most Christians, people of the world, no, Christians, people in the world know of Easter, Resurrection Sunday, Christmas but we don't really think about Pentecost. And you're going to see today how important Pentecost is to the believer. Okay? And, 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 and this is coming from a life of chasing all these different ideas that the world wants to tell us about. We can, if we get offended today, we can find another church next week. Okay? If you don't like what the pastor's wearing, you don't like that somebody didn't sit next to you, or, the, or this happened, or you didn't like the song, you can find another church. If you don't like the fact that, you know, we stand up and we worship, and you, maybe the worship was too long, and the preacher preached too long, you know, you know, you can find another church. We have choices today. You know, we, we don't like something, we just go somewhere else. But those 120 plus in the upper room, they did not have a choice to go anywhere else. They obeyed what God said, and God says, wait for me. And suddenly there came, verse 2, from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit 
and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Period. We're going to stop there for now. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your anointing today. We thank you for your church. And Lord, speak right now through your servant. And Lord, let us go from this place different with a greater understanding of Pentecost in Jesus. And I give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to capitalize on one statement this morning. It's this, I'm Pentecostal and it's not my fault. I'm Pentecostal, and it's not my fault. Pentecost, as I said, means 50. We we, we know that Jesus came, ministered for three and a half years, died at the age of 33 and a half. You know, he was resurrected, okay? And then he left again. I don't know if you can wrap your mind around this or you want to think about this. It might be a little bit hard to think about this for some of us. But he spent time with these disciples. He raised the dead, healed the sick, the blind could could see, the deaf could hear, the lame could walk, and all of a sudden, he was killed. They were distraught. But he came back, as he said he would. He was resurrected on the third day. And then we end up with 40 days with Jesus on the earth after he was resurrected. Okay? He was here 40 days. And then he told them to go and wait for someone to come to them. You remember the story. We're reading about it right now. Go to the upper room. Okay, we're going to the upper room tonight, but it's a church up the street. They named it after this account here, so what an appropriate place to go. But we are, he said, go and wait for me. Now, 40 days Jesus goes to be with the Father. They go to the upper room. They're in the upper room for how many days? 10 days. He says when Pentecost came, Pentecost came on the 50th day. So he was on earth for 40 days. Pentecost came on the 50th day. So do the math. They were in the upper room for 10 days. What were they doing? Waiting. 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 We think sermons are too long, right? They were waiting. After 40 days, Mark 16, 19, so then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. He tells them to go wait for 10 days in the upper room. I want you to just take a moment and imagine a waiting room. Anybody ever been in a waiting room? One of my most momentous moments of waiting in a waiting room is for the birth of a child. Okay? Not for someone to go through surgery. Not for someone to save somebody's life. But the enjoyable ones are the waiting for the child to be born. I remember being in waiting rooms with parents. Waiting, or family members, waiting for their loved one to have the child. This waiting room there's anxious family members, there's, there's friends, there's maybe even the pastor of your church is there, and they're just waiting for the news of a baby whatever, right? I mean, like, boy or girl, healthy or not, you know, they're like, do you want to hear the news? He or she has arrived. And then in that room, they're waiting, they're, they're pacing, they're wondering, when will the news come? the news of a birth. And suddenly in verse 2, there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. I want you to think about the waiting room, and, and all of a sudden this happens, and you're like, what's wrong? The doctor rushes in. They're like, what's going on? Is everything okay? And Jesus like, be cool. I said this was going to happen. They, they were there in this room, now notice, how many of you love the Word of God? And let, let me say something here. We, we almost don't, I don't even know if we have a PowerPoint today. We do. We almost didn't have a PowerPoint today. Okay? I've preached many sermons without it. Jesus never had one. 
okay? So if you ever show up on a Sunday and we don't have a PowerPoint, don't throw things at me. Bring your Bibles with you, okay? And watch me with your word, okay? I can, I can animate some of this stuff out for you. I don't stand here real stoic, you know, but I can I'll move around. But, you know, don't understand. Bring your word to church. Bring the Bible to church. It's on your phones, but follow the word, right? Follow the word. And, and, and it says here in verse 2, and it filled the entire house where they were what? Sitting. Now, do you think if you've been waiting in a room for 10 days, you'd be standing up? They were sick. They were like, man, they were beat. I mean, come on. You're human, right? Are you all human? Jesus died. Jesus came. Jesus is gone again. Go wait in this room for 10 days. I mean, there wasn't a countdown other than the fact of Pentecost. So they were anticipating on the 50th day, 50th day something might happen. And all of a sudden, verse 3, in divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each of them. Now that's got to be a sight, right? I mean, that's pretty amazing. In this room, something totally incredible happens on the day when they were all together in one place, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. I speak in other tongues. I can speak in tongues. Okay? Now, the way I receive tongues is a story for another day. But I can speak in other tongues. All right? So remember that. And some of you can too. But it doesn't make me any more saved than you are. It doesn't make me any more holy than you are. And this is where the church, if, in my opinion, has, has sometimes they, they, they stop at the period here. They all spoke in other tongues, and they stop with the period, and that's, that's where it ends. But understand, that's not where it ended. In that room, there was nothing they could do to change what was happening. There was no stopping it. They couldn't go to a different church. They couldn't complain and say, I'm out, you know. They, they were stuck. The church was born. I mean, the, the, the Holy Spirit rushed in there and says, we have a church. That's what happened. That day in that room was the birthday of the church. All waiting to hear the news, waiting, pacing, wondering when the news will come. The news of the birth of the church was heard by all. We have to get back to Pentecostal roots, beloved. Listen to me. I told you something in the, in the, in the title of this message, and that title of this message again is, I'm Pentecostal, and it's not my fault. If you're a believer and you are born again, you're a Christian, you are Pentecostal and it's not your fault. I want to take a closer look at Pentecost and examine what I believe a fact that every Christian was born with Pentecostal DNA. And this allows us to experience the joy and freedom of being a Christian. Now I want you to think just for a moment as, as, as the news came in to that waiting room of the upper room as they were sitting there and the Holy Spirit flooded that place. Think about the waiting room of the hospital when the baby is born. Everyone jumps up in the air and you get the crazy guy that runs through the hall shouting, it's a church! It's a boy, it's a girl, it's a church! This was an incredible thing. And we walk in here, most of us don't have this, but we walk in here on Sundays and we're just like. Mm. The church is alive. I'm Pentecostal. And it's not my fault. 
First thing we're going to look at here is every believer on this planet was birthed out of the Pentecostal experience. There's some people right now that are of another denomination that might not be happy with what I just said. But it's a fact. Jesus didn't say, go to this upper room if you want the Pentecostal experience, or you want to go over here and you don't want to, you don't want to have all that jumping and shouting and all this hoop and holler. You go over this little room and you just wait over there. And then if you don't want that, you go to this other little room over here. Look what we've done today in America and all across the world with all these different churches. There's one church. And it's not Assemblies of God. It's not the Catholic Church. It's not the Baptist Church. It's not the Methodist Church. It's not the Presbyterian Church. There's one church. It's his church. And we all are Pentecostal. Every believer was birthed at the Pentecostal experience. It's not uncommon today to hear someone say, I was born this way. It's not my fault. I was born this way. It's not my fault. The fact is, we had no say-so regarding who our parents were or where we were born. I, I did not have the memo. You know, right now, we are in America. I was sharing with somebody the other night. Last night's wedding was, was they married a wonderful family from uh, England and Nigeria. And England is, you know, England is a lot older than the United States is. I mean, we're barely 200 years old. You ever thought about that? A little over 200 years old. I mean, you know, and, and here we are. We think we got it all figured out. We think we're the cream of the cream. We're, we're, you know, we're the cream of the cream. We think we're the, you know, we're everything. You know, look at the rest of the world. We look, we look down on the rest of the world. But let me tell you something. The rest of the world, Jesus died for those dear people. And they're going to be in heaven, those who are born again. And we have a job to do, and that's to live, in, live out and walk out what, what Pentecost has taught us in the Scriptures. And what Pentecost taught us is not to speak in tongues. I'm sorry if you disagree with that. It's not to speak in tongues. Now, let me say again, I speak in tongues. I'm glad I do. But it's, that wasn't the purpose of Pentecost. The fact is, I had no say-so who my parents were, where I was born. But that was the first time. The second time. The second time I had a say-so. It's called being born again. See, now I know where I am and whom I serve. See, they, they had no, they had no say-so. You had no say, say-so on where you're born, how you're born, your economic status, you know, who your parents were, whether you had a father or not a father, you know, you had no say-so, but now you have a say-so. And this is what Pentecost shows us. How do I find the joy and freedom of being a Christian? I mean, how many Christians do you know that just like, oh? I mean, come on. I mean, it's like, are you saved or not? I mean, Jesus left and sent us the Holy Spirit, birthed the church. We are the church. And I'm telling you now, we have carried out our sadness and we've walked around defeated for too long. Why aren't people getting saved? Well, why would they want to? You stink of death. Right? I mean, think about it. I mean, you guys look... You guys look great today. You smell good, talk good. But tomorrow's coming. But can I tell you something? You're the same person as a child of God today as you are tomorrow. And you are on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, Friday and Saturday. You're the same person. You're the church. You're, he died for you. He resurrected you in the newness of Christ. And that's just something we should be celebrating. We shouldn't walk around like life is so bad. Listen, Life stinks on earth, but guess what? I don't live here. This isn't my home. We've carried the burden 
aimlessly without any clear direction for too long. I mean, where are you going? I don't know. <laughs> Just trying to make it through another, another, another year. Just trying to get there. Jesus already showed you the way. You know, if this doesn't work, this will work. Upside your head, right? No, but, but listen, he's already showed us the way. We've asked God for more than we have given for too long. It's in us. Listen to me. It's in us. We are born Pentecostal, again Pentecostal. Right? I mean, we are. How do I find the joy of being a Christian? The greatest hunger in the church today is to search for something bigger than just boring religion. Are you tired of boring religion? I mean, I can tell you right now, if you're bored today, get saved. I mean, if you're bored on Pentecost Sunday with me preaching, get saved. Okay? Because you're wanting to be fed something that's not, that, that I, I can't provide for you. Understand, we need to, to feed on what God ha has given us. And, and, and here we have 120 frightened, powerless, self-centered, willful, and discouraged men and women that were down and out. I mean, they were beat down. Listen to me. We think about them as all, you know, everything's okay, hunky-dory, everything's great. Jesus came. Jesus died. Jesus came back. Jesus is gone again. You ever had somebody walk out of your life? You ever had someone walk out of your life? You ever have them walk back into your life? You ever, ever have them walk out again? Pretty soon you get a little discouraged, right? You get a little upset. I mean, you're like, you don't trust them. Let me tell you something. Obedience is better than sacrifice. There's times you're going to not want to trust. You're, you're going to want to get up and go. You're, I mean, they're in this upper room for 10 days. And they're hearing the, the commotion in the city and the smells of everything going on around them and, and, and someone yelling up the thing, Hey! Andrew! We're going out tonight. You want to come? No, man, i got to stay up here. Man, there's going to be girls. Beautiful women. Visiting from Egypt. I mean, don't you think we need to talk to them when we get to heaven? I'm guaranteed they were getting yelled, you know, yelled at. Come on out! They're, no, we're staying here. We're gonna wait. You coward! He already abandoned. He's not coming back. And we sit there and we listen to all this over and over, and the world screaming at you. Just give up the Lord. Don't, he's going to fail you again. Just, no, he's not. He hasn't. People are in need of intimacy, inspiration, and the impacting power of the Holy Spirit from the church. See, it got their attention. As I said, every believer was birthed out of the Pentecostal experience. And there's nothing we can do to change that the church was birthed out of pentecost look at verse 2 and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting these 120 plus were about to be caught caught up in what what pentecost was about for them to be caught but then released any fishermen in here okay I never understood the fact that you catch a fish, you let it go. I grew up hungry. I don't know about y'all. I, I, was, I was sharing with someone the other day. I, I look at news on my phone. I don't watch news. I don't watch TV hardly. I, I, I flip here, and I look at what's happening. And I saw something day before yesterday, I think. It says, look into the Kardashians' pantry. I'm thinking, well, I wonder what they eat. Now, I, I, I open that article up, and I'm, I'm like, 
I expected to see some cabinets in a refrigerator like we have. One of these girls, her walk-in refrigerator was bigger than my living room. Her pantry was bigger than our two bedrooms put together. They're not hungry. I grew up hungry. So when I see people catch these fish, and they hold this fish up, I'm like, you know, I want to see it on the grill, or I want to see it fried up in a basket on a plate with some fries and hush puppies or tater tots or something. I want to see some, some food. And they'll let it right back go in the water. They caught it, and then they released it. Now, look what Jesus does. He catches us. And thank God he doesn't fry us up. That comes later for some of you who aren't saved. But he, he catches us, and then he releases us. There's something about a touch from the fisherman. There's something about anointing when Jesus touches your life. He touched you to release you. And some people live from year to year. They wait for Pentecost because they want a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. They, they, they want to be slain the Spirit. They want to talk in other tongues again. They've got, you know, some of y'all might be thinking, man, my tongue talking isn't too good. I've got to practice up a little bit. Don't raise your hand, but some of y'all have been thinking about that. I haven't spoken tongues in a while. I need to speak in tongues. I've got to practice up. Well, a pastor asked me to pray in tongues. A pastor will never ask you to pray in tongues publicly. That's not biblical, by the way. When you do the work of God that God called you to do, when he releases you into this wicked world, you begin to do what God called you to do, and we're going to see something in just a moment in the scripture that's going to explain a lot to you, that you need the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, or you'll die. You need the power of the Holy Spirit. Secondly, not only every believer was birthed out of the Pentecostal experience, the second thing is, is a distinctive that defines who we are. It's who we are. Your character defines you. You can say all the right words, you can dress up, okay? You can put, what, what's the saying? You put lipstick on a pig, it's still a pig. Right? I mean, still a pig. You can make it look real nice. It's still a pig. Your character defines you. Let me just say this. The character that so many times we see in church from people isn't the character they see on Monday morning at work. We put lipstick on a pig. I, I, I think, I, I didn't call you a pig. I don't think what you think I did. But, um, but you know, your, your people you deal with every day, the people we deal with every day, they, these are people that need to that need to experience the love of Christ, not your temper tantrums. Not because they took your parking place or, or, or they didn't invite you to their party. You're, you're to represent Christ in the midst of hell. You're to turn the other cheek. You're to forgive. Right? And that's a hard lesson to learn. Right? Right? I mean, Samantha, we go out there... We watch those referees out there in those ball games. They're blind. You know, these kids, you know, we want to we throw something at them. I told your husband, you go over there and choke him. Well, he didn't listen to me. But just kidding, that was the old Jeff talking. But, you know, we, we have to be like Christ called us to be. It defines who we are. See, Jesus is our transforming power. He transforms us into what? Into new creatures. And here the, they were infused with a supernatural power. Now the power comes intellectually. You know, Jesus makes you smarter. I'm living proof of that. I was dumb as a box of rocks before. But Jesus makes you smarter. I mean, wisdom, common sense, right? I mean, he makes us smarter emotionally we become stronger i mean you got some tissues 
What's wrong? It's just something they said. There's a time for crying. There's a time for laughing. Listen. But if you're being triggered by what people say all the time, the tears start running down your face, it's time to let the Spirit of God heal you. Because when they talk about you or something, guess what? It's, they're talking about him. And he's going to deal with them later. We need to be strong because they'll try to keep you off your mission. And see, it defines, it, Pentecost is a distinctive that defines who we are. And, 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 and look at this. It, verse 3 says, And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each of them. They experienced who Jesus was and is through the power of the Holy Spirit. Some people say, I want to just know the Lord more. But don't give me that Holy Spirit tongue-talking stuff. I don't want no part of that. Let me let some of you in on a little secret. If you're born again, you've got the Holy Spirit in you. He's already there. Okay? He's already there. Well, I don't speak in tongues. That can come later. All right? Yield yourself to God's work. And he'll equip you for what you need to have. They, their faith was impacted in such a way that their spirit became the entry point for the Holy Spirit. See, the results were the mind was transformed. See, you don't want to know what this mind used to think about. See, Jesus changes all that by his Holy Spirit. And, and, and we as a church, we need to begin to put our hope and our trust in him and allow him to touch us in such a way as, he, as he's transforming our mind. See, our mind is given a download from his mind. We call it the mind of Christ. And he begins to pour into you his thoughts. Have you ever been wronged or as a Christian, you've been wronged and you wanted to respond in such a way, but something else came out of your mouth instead? The Holy Spirit. If it was good, it was the Holy Spirit. But sometimes, it, sadly, it works the other way around, James. You know, we don't listen to what God says to say. We say what we want to say. See, he downloads into us his mind by his Spirit. See, he's building, he's changing, building your character. The old selfish will, will and way of your old life is now being released and put into a place that no longer occupies you. You don't occupy you anymore. And he replaces it with his will and his way. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I don't know why the pastor wants me. I don't, I don't know why he texts me when I, don't, when I miss. I don't know why he bugs me. I, I don't... I, I assure you it's not just so you can come to church and I can say, well, we had so many people here today. It's because Satan wants to destroy you. He wants to kill you. Every little step that he can pull you away from the fellowship with the believers and the preaching of his word, he's beginning to get a, a foothold in your life and strong. He's been, been getting a nipple, nibble, nibble on you and, and, and beginning to pull you in and take little bites here and there and pretty soon, that, don't, that wasn't funny. And pre pretty soon, you're, you're going to be consumed. Consumed. See, God's Holy Spirit awakens his people to produce supernatural beyond our human limitations. I mean, we like superheroes, don't we? We watch superheroes, don't we? I know our dear son, Fabio, he loves superheroes. You got Abby even loving superheroes. But you know who the greatest superhero is? He lives inside of you. You know Satan wants to counterfeit everything that God has? Where do you think Superman came from? And Batman? And Spider-Man? These are all counterfeits of the true Holy Spirit. Okay? I'm saying that to get stir some of you guys up a little bit I think it's probably all fun but listen to me think about it spiritually for a moment 
Some of us are more excited going to see it, seeing the new Marvel movie than you are coming to church on Sunday. Okay, that's why it's demonic. Right? That's why it's demonic. Okay, you got one agrees with me. The rest of y'all will think I'm judging you. When you, you, you begin to understand who the Holy Spirit is in you and the power of the Holy Spirit in you, all pretty soon you're going to realize all this other stuff is fake. It's not, it's not real. Eagle didn't wear his cape today. He had a cape on yesterday. You got it with you? Praise the Lord. But when you get the Holy Spirit, you don't need a costume anymore. Listen, we'll burn that thing after church, brother. When, when you... When you when, when you get the Holy Spirit, you don't need a costume. You don't need to play dress up in your house and stand in front of a mirror in your little tidy whitey Superman outfits. Now, I, don't, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but some of you guys probably have a, a Superman outfit at your house that you put on every night just to look at yourself saying, I'm Superman. I'm Batwoman. Okay. I'm, John's, is nod, John's is nodding his head. I'm Catwoman. <laughs> you think I'm joking. There's some craziness out there, all right? There's some craziness. I knew a man, listen to me, he was a deacon in a church. He was part of a church, went to church every Sunday. But you know what he loved to do? He loved to go put on women's clothing and go walk around in heels in, in different locations throughout the community. And I, and I can tell you this much. He would shame most of us in his Bible knowledge. But he sure could dress like a woman. All right, that's demonic. That's demonic. And see, we laugh about this stuff. It shows, oh, look at what so-and-so is doing. Look what so It's demonic. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the Pentecostal distinctive. In our life. It's our character. We need to recognize some of this stuff and quit making fun of this stuff. It's a demonic thing trying to get into our kids' lives and our, our kids' minds. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. Verse 4, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, that, that's a key there. As the Spirit gave them utterance. I need to practice my tongues. No, you don't. But you have to put yourself in a place where the Spirit needs to use it. He doesn't need to use it while you're sitting there online. I mean, he doesn't need to use it when you're sitting there, you know, going out with your boyfriends and girlfriends and, and going to the club and doing all that. He doesn't need, I mean, you're not going to, he doesn't need, but when you go into the highways and the byways and you walk into those drug dens and you walk into those children's rooms that are caught up in, with a suicide spirit, when you go into these places, understand that's when the Holy Spirit is going to come out of you. You've got to get yourself in a place where you begin to intercede for the souls and the lives of your children and your family members and your communities. And when you start to do this, do this, the Holy Spirit will begin to flow out of you. You don't need to practice anything. Jesus promises to his children. John 16, 7 says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For I do not go away for if I do not go away, the helper will come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And here the Holy Spirit begins to educate them supernaturally. Hebrews eleven six. we know the scripture. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. We need the Holy Spirit to please God. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and he rewards those who seek him. He rewards those who seek him. When we seek God, guess what? He will satisfy your desires. See, that's where the selfish becomes selfless. That, that's where the weak becomes strong. And let me tell you again, I'm Pentecostal, and it's not my fault. I was born into this thing, born again into this thing, right? It's in my DNA. Lastly, this morning, I am who I am because of Jesus. I am who I am because of Jesus. Whose fault? It's Jesus' fault. He made me this way. Oh. You don't know. You don't know.
know what I went through as a child. Probably. So you don't know about my mom and my dad. You don't know what I went through. My brother used to do this to me. I don't, you don't know about this. Well, 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 hold it. Stop. 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 Let's talk. Are you a Christian? Yes, sir. Are you born again? Yes, sir. Then the old man is dead. Those things never happened to you. It happened to the other. They're dead. See, this is what Pentecost is. We begin to understand that we were born into this thing. And all of a sudden, the old is gone. The new has come. And we quit whining and complaining about this person, that person. Blame Jesus. He took all that on him on the cross. You think Jesus died for the molestations and the addictions and the pornography, all the joy. You think Jesus died for the alcohol and the drugs just to say, here, take it back. Are you saved or not? He took it from you. He doesn't give it back. But the more you dwell on it, remember a moment ago, your mind is renewed. The more you dwell on it, the more you open up the gate for it to come back. Those thoughts. All the while, Jesus is like, don't you trust me? I told you, wait on the Holy Spirit. Wait on the Holy Spirit. I am who I am because of Jesus. Acts chapter 1 verse 5 says, John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You will be baptized with what? The Holy Spirit. This, the church, is the greatest unused power in the world. Guess what? The greatest unused power in the world is the Holy Spirit in our life. That's the greatest unused power in this world, is the Holy Spirit in our life. It's not nuclear. It's, it's not, you know, I mean, look at what they're doing. To, there is no way an electric car is more powerful than a gas car. Uh, there's no way. Okay? I mean, they're not making electric-powered airplanes. Would you fly in one? They can't generate enough propulsion to get off the ground. Okay? Look what the world is doing. They're condemning this, and they're saying, take this. The enemy does the same thing in our life. He says, just take this. You're going to be okay. They want to quit and cut the Holy Spirit from believers' life. I'm not talking about, listen, every child of God is Pentecostal. Listen to me. Every Baptist is Pentecostal. They have a Pentecostal DNA in them from what God did and how God did it. Okay, I am who I am because of Jesus. And, and, and Pentecost infuses them with power. Acts 2, verse 7 and 8. Look at this. The rest of this verse says, Utterly amazed, they ask, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that each of us hears them in the native language? Now look at that. You say, well, pastor, what, what, what's, this, what's so significant of tongues? I just read it to you. There were 15 or 16 different nations represented there with a different dialect that did not understand their language. Did you hear what I just said? They could not hear the gospel from the from their native tongue. So here we have the miracle of tongues. And so right here, they said, they were amazed. They said, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own language? The purpose of Pentecost is that, we'll pe that people will hear the message of the gospel in their own language. Okay? It's not for you to run around babbling in tongues. Now, before you think I'm running too far away from tongues, listen, I speak in tongues. And I've confronted devils. And let me tell you, when I get around a demon, I don't speak in English. I don't speak in Spanish. I speak in the, my spirit language. And you, if you, want, if you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, 
Yield yourself to the will of God and go where he tells you to go. He'll give you the tools that you need to have. But don't you dare think for a moment because you don't speak in other tongues that you're less than this other person. Because that's not biblical. Now, pastor, you tell me don't seek. No, no, no. You want to seek everything God has for you. I mean, if you, 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 you seek the tongues, you're going to pray. But understand, when you say, Lord, I want, to be, I want to speak in other tongues, you better pack your suitcase because he's going to send you somewhere. You better pack your spiritual emotion. You better get ready because he's going to put you somewhere where you, don't, where you wouldn't go naturally. You wouldn't go normally. Let me tell you something. If I wasn't baptized in the Holy Spirit, I would not have come to Miami, Florida, the pastor. I would have, I, I would have went to some little, you know, corn, corn-fed beef town somewhere, okay, where, you know, with all these open roads with a single highway, you know, one red light or no red light in a town. I wouldn't come down here with all these crazy people. Listen to me. That's the Holy Ghost. I couldn't live here without the Holy Ghost. You got to go where God tells you to go and experience what God tells you to experience. See, the days and the hours before Pentecost, they were filled with pain and suffering. Remember, they were waiting, they were hurting, they were, they were ridiculed, they were being yelled at. You remember, remember Noah in the ark, they're, yelled, they're ridiculing him. They're probably yelling up the windows, hey, you guys are foolish. They were anxious, they were frustrated. Why? Because Jesus says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And they're looking like some of you look today, like, who, me? Me? You want me to go preach the gospel? You're a crazy preacher. These were a bunch of misfits. They were a bunch of bumbling, stumbling, crazy, goofy people like us. And guess what? It changed that day at Pentecost. Their mind changed. Their character changed. Peter, who ran and hid himself when Jesus was crucified, he was, just after this passage of Scripture, he stands up and preaches, and thousands get saved because of the Holy Spirit. And the disciples were sitting there in that room. They're facing this thought. They're facing this idea. They're saying this. They're saying, how can I do what Jesus said to do? I want to please Jesus. And Jesus says, Pentecost. Pentecost. The purpose of Pentecost. Tongues was the delivery method for the gospel to be heard. On that occasion, it was tongues. Verse 11. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. That day, thousands came to Jesus because they heard the gospel in their own tongue. That was the miracle of Pentecost, that the gospel will be preached, the gospel will, will be shared. I am who I am because of Jesus. And, and this morning, as I get ready to close, Desiree, if you come up to the keyboard, please, ma'am, I want, I want to ask you a question. Have your days been an impossibility to living out for Christ? Don't raise your hand, but I know some of your struggles. I know my struggles, and I'm telling you right now that there seems to be some days are an impossibility to doing what God called you to do. Is that a fact? Yes, sir, it's a fact. Some days are hard. Some days are tough. Some days I don't want to go on. But you know what? I begin to say, Lord, I need you today. Holy Spirit, I need you today. And the Holy Spirit comes in there. He's there for me. Guess what? He's filled me with his Holy Spirit. And I'm Pentecostal. And it's not my fault. Guess what they did? They got up and they told somebody what God did. Guess what you're going to do today? Those of you who are born again, you're going to get up from this place. You're going to go tell somebody of the goodness of God. And you're going to be able to proclaim life over them. <laughs> Romans 10, 14 through 15 says this. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him in whom they have not heard, never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. God has commissioned and called every one of you to preach the good news by the power of the Holy Spirit. He's called you to cast out devils, to lay hands on the sick and see them recover, to even see the dead rise if he tells you to do it. He's called you 
to not be you, but to be him. Don't let your past, don't let where you were born, don't let what your, you know, who your mom and daddy were, don't let your abuses of your childhood and past keep you from doing what God says you are today. You're his ambassador. That's what Pentecost is. The greatest thing in the church today is, for, is to have a modern day Pentecost. We, we need miracles, church. And we've seen miracles, don't get me wrong. Some of you are miracles. I'm a miracle. Pentecost was not just a once and done event. It's something we need a fresh anointing, a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit. We need to experience new filling of the Spirit. We, sh we should seek Him more. The church is born and the world must know. How? Because you're Pentecostal and it's not your fault. Our church today, just like the disciples in the upper room, I believe can experience the miracle of Pentecost by remembering and allowing God to do the same thing in us. And I want to ask you something today. Do you want a fresh Pentecostal experience? Do you want, do you want to be used of God? They waited for 10 days for God to do something. They waited, and God did something. You're here this morning, you say, Pastor, I'm Pentecostal, and it's not my fault. So I want you to stand on your feet right now. I'm Pentecostal, and it's not my fault. And by you admitting that, you're saying, Lord, I yield myself to you. I'm going to pray a fresh anointing over your life. Some of you are saying, well, you don't know my life, Pastor. You don't know the things I do in the dark. You don't know the things I do in the light. You don't know what I got going on. You don't know my addictions. Listen, I don't need to know any of that. Don't you think for a moment those disciples didn't have problems? I mean, Peter was all jacked up. And look what Jesus did for him. Thomas doubted everything. Look what Jesus did for him. Most of all of them died a martyr for their faith. Pastor, are I going to die? You want to die. You want to. Guess why? This world is not our home. I die every single day. You crucify the flesh every single day. Father, right now in Jesus' name, as your church is standing today, I pray an anointing over their lives that they would find the freedom today and the joy of being a Christian, Lord. And I declare life over them today that they would know, Father, that they were birthed out of a Pentecostal experience. They would know that it's a distinctive that defines who they are. They would know that it's because of you, Lord. It's because of you. And Lord, I ask God right now that today we would leave this place greater than we came in because of you. We would leave this place, Father, with an excitement, Lord, knowing that, God, we have a job to do. And, Lord, I just pray, Father, right now that your church, that your church is alive. And they walk in that life, trusting in you. And, Lord, I, Father, I ask God right now, if there be some in here today that don't know you like I'm preaching you today, that they would say, Lord, I want to give my life to you today. I want to surrender my will for yours today. Lord, right now, Right now is that time. Father, right now, you see those hearts. Salvation come to them right now, and they would walk with you. Change them, Father. Renew their minds. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise this morning. Give him praise this morning. How do I find the freedom and joy of being a Christian? By remembering the day you were born and your father ran through the hall declaring, it's a church. It's a church. Pentecost, listen to this. Pentecost is when the church was birthed and cries out, hello world, I'm coming for you. With a message of hope. That is who we are. Amen? Amen. Give the Lord praise this morning. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Give him a shout of praise. Come on, do it again. Give him a shout of praise. God is good.
You may be seated just a moment. If you did not receive one of these cups for communion, you're, you're born again believer, you love the Lord, you did not receive a cup for communion, raise your hand. I want to make sure you get one of these. I hope today's message was clear and concise enough for you. There's so much there. But I want you to know that I'm Pentecostal and it's not my fault. You're Pentecostal as a child of God and it's not your fault. Jesus made you that way. He's your father. And he's going to use you in a mighty way. Amen? He's going to change everything. This morning we want to take communion before we leave and remember what the Lord did for us. And again, I hope communion means more to you now. Jesus did this for us. Amen? He changed us. In 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26, says, On the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, right now, I thank you for this way for representing your body. Lord, I thank you for the cross today. The blood that was shed on Calvary, the body that was beaten and bruised for us. That, Lord, you took upon yourself on that day every sin I've ever committed, we've ever committed, we ever will commit. Let us see that today supernaturally, that it's gone. We are, those of us who are born again are no longer sinners, we're saints. Thank you, Lord, for this body that was given for us today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's all partake of the way for representing the body today. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. It's important we understand this part in a way that it's the new covenant, not the old covenant. Jesus fulfilled the law. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we don't have to sin like we used to sin. We've been victor we have victory over sin. Does it mean you'll never sin again? No, no. What you'll find out, and trust me, I know this. The minute I start to think, well, I don't have a, t Lord, I'm pretty good right now. The Lord says, whoa, 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 whoa. And all of a sudden, boom, I see something else. That was never wrong before, but now God says, now you, what was he doing? He's sanctifying us. And church, let me say this to you. That's why it's so important. If you're going to go up to somebody and you're going to point out their sin, you better make sure your name's the Holy Spirit. Because what they're going through is, might be something you've already beaten, but they haven't even, they don't even know it's wrong. Have you ever told someone that they're sinning and they look at you like, what, that's not a sin? Get out of my face. But what you don't understand is the Lord's dealing with something else in their life. He's doing something else in their life. He might be taken out of their life, but you're still doing it. You don't think it's a sin. Watch it. Watch it. You pray for them. Now, Marilyn, if your dear friend there, if, if you, I'll just use this hypothetically. You used to be an alcoholic. You love the booze. Not you, but Marilyn. And your friend sees you start to take a little sip here and there, but she remembers how you were before you, God, before God set you free of alcohol. She has every right to hit you over the head with that bottle. No, she has every right to tell you, Marilyn, I'm worried about you. I'm going to pray for you. Put that bottle down. We need to hold each other accountable. Right? If I see Eagle running around his Superman outfit, I'm going to hold him accountable. That's not God. We need to be clothed with his righteousness, church. His righteousness. And he don't look like Superman. He doesn't look like Spider-Man. Okay? He's Jesus. He's Jesus. Lord, thank you for the cup. Thank you for the blood today that was shed on Calvary. Thank you for your church today. And Lord, I just pray right now as we take this, Father, let us see the experience, Lord, healing in our bodies. We need healing in our bodies right now, Father. Healing in our minds. And today, heal marriages, Lord. Save spouses, Lord God. Salvation of children as we commit ourselves to you. In Jesus' precious name, they all said, amen. Let's take the cup representing the blood. Hallelujah. God is good. Come on, just praise Him. Praise Him, praise Him. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Isn't God good? He knows what we need before we even ask. The Lord, as I was praying for people, spoke something in my heart. There are some of you that are asking God for something. And you've been asking God for a long time. But I believe what I heard him say was, find a place and sit down and wait for him. Wait for him. Wait for him. He's given you a promise. You know, maybe you're seeking the gifts of the Spirit. But again, the gifts of the Spirit are for a purpose. I've learned this in my life. As I become a vessel for him, as I become his, his hands and his feet, he guides me. And he gives me everything I need to fulfill the task he wants me to fulfill. If you're willing to listen to his instruction, you'll be amazed like they were in the upper room. Because he'll hit you so hard, he'll resurrect you in that moment. And there'll be no stopping you. Turn off the voices, turn off the doubt. And only hear his word speaking to you. Find a place. Get alone and seek him. I'm not saying if the Lord says do it for a few days or do it for an hour, but take a time every day. Just get alone. Let the Lord speak to you. If it's for salvation. If it's for healing. It's for baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's good. No, it's not wrong to speak. Let me, let me tell you something. I wouldn't be here today if God didn't fill me with his Holy Spirit like he did. I mean, the things I've been through, when I can't talk in English, all I can speak is the spiritual language. I need that. I need that. I'm here today because God knows that. Amen? Father, right now, thank you, Lord, so much for your church. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. Thank you, Lord, that we are Pentecostal. It's not our fault, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for making us this way. And, Lord, as we go from this place, Lord, those who can come tonight, Lord, to the Pentecost rally, Father, I pray tonight, Lord, that, God, you would God, bring, bring a lot from our church, Lord, there to seek your face. And, Lord, just give you praise right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let, let me mention this to you also before you leave. It's a Pentecost rally. All right. There will be an emphasis on tongues tonight. Okay. And it's not wrong, but if you feel the Lord would have you speak in other tongues, and he's telling you to go down and get prayed for, listen to what God says. But don't think for a moment, because you don't, that you're any less than anybody else. Okay. God filled me with the Spirit. Power, I've been through many evangelists, many pastors, praying for me to speak in tongues. You know when I started speaking in tongues? When a girl in our youth group was demon-possessed, and she started crying out like a devil. I couldn't speak in English anymore. It was the Spirit of God coming out of me. I was speaking in other tongues. It was then I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, doing the work that I had to have the Holy Spirit to do. Okay? So when you seek the gifts of the Spirit... You're seeking his will and his way for your life. And sometimes that will and that way can be a scary place. But let me tell you something. There's no better place. We were singing that song, right? There's no better place that we want to be than yeah. in his will. Amen? Yeah. Amen. God bless you. Tonight we'll be meeting at 6 o'clock to, to head up there. And then if you want to meet us up at Room Assembly of God, um, I think it's 137. I don't know, address may be up there. Um, but just meet us there at 7 o'clock. We try to sit together and uh, we'll have a good time. Amen. There's a great church going to be doing a worship there. Uh, a Haitian church, Haitian worship. It, it, I know there's a brother, Brother Lionier, great pastor, good friend of mine, and he's got a, a dynamic worship team. And um, so we're excited to, to, to hear them and to worship with them. Amen? God bless you. Have a phenomenal afternoon, and we'll see you. If I don't see you tonight, I'll see you on Wednesday, 7 o'clock. God bless. You look so pretty. You look so nice. You look so handsome. Nobody knows. Nobody knows.